Steve, I wonder what you make of the initiations. Obviously, a uh, big contingent on social media snickering at banks that they say want a piece of the investment banking business. Yeah, this is unsurprising. I mean, they had to wait their, uh, their kind of uh, 25 days, and um, I think everyone was expecting this to happen. And, um, you know, the targets, I think, are up for grabs uh, where, where this really lands. Um, I think there are bigger questions for the long term for Lyft, and I'm sure we'll get into that. But I think none of these, you know, none of these new analyst coverages are all that surprising today. What's your general take on their growth potential? You know, I think um, as I look at both Lyft uh, and also, you know, sort of the, la the latest out of, uh, out of the S1 from Uber, I think what's clear is uh, the growth at any cost uh, strategy, which sort of got them both to where we are today, um, has to be metered and measured by profitability. We're all talking about that, I think. Um, but I do think it was surprising for me as I looked at uh, Uber's S1 how much the growth had slowed. And I think when you look at growth expectations for Lyft going forward, it's you know, basically 50% after a couple of really nice years of you know, doubling and tripling. So I think we have to accept slower growth, um, but we have to get to profitability. Um, I think that's a big question, certainly for, for Lyft, more so I think than uh, it is for Uber. Uh, but yeah, I think that the growth is definitely slowing for both companies, which I think is a bit concerning. Casey, the fact that you do have a flurry of analysts coming out and initiating coverage on Lyft, uh, you know, as a buy or as an outperform, et cetera, uh, and given the fact that, like, n the story hasn't actually changed around the path for profitability, there are still so many question marks. Does this really speak to the fact that this is more of a valuation story right now for this stock specifically? Yeah, I think that's right. I think there's still a lot of optimism around the potential of ride sharing over the long term, but it's just also the case that these companies are losing a ton of money, right? Like Uber is the leader in this space and they're losing $2 billion a year. So it just remains to be seen how they're going to uh, meet those evalu valuations over the long term. Casey, how do, you, uh, how do you characterize, I mean, longer term, the threat out of Waymo, which today announces a deal to begin some manufacturing uh, 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 regarding the day when all, all of these players try to jump into autonomous full bore. Yeah, I mean, I think that's going to be a really exciting moment when we can all order a self-driving car from our phones. And I think, you know, I mean, Lyft and Uber have obviously been exploring autonomy on their own. Everyone I talk to says it's further away than you think. But at the same time, we already see some of these cars on the road. So the faster that happens, uh, whether it's Waymo or anyone else, I think it is going to totally change this business. I think to yeah, be fair, Steve. though, this is uh, this is way out. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, I think we, we love... We love the, you know, the dream of this. Of course, Elon loves to talk about it, as he did yesterday. Uh, but we are, uh, when you really consider the corner cases, uh, and as an engineer, I think about these a lot, uh, around you know, mixed driving with both autonomous vehicles and uh, driven vehicles, um, it's just going to be a long time before that really becomes a reality. All right. Well, uh, before we can get to a full autonomy, we got to get to phones that don't break. Let's turn to Samsung, <laughs> uh, delaying the launch of that $2,000 smartphone after several reviewers, including us at CNBC, reported issues with that display. Casey, um, I've read some takes that the company should be grateful to the reviewers for helping them uh, nip a problem in the bud. And we've know, we know what it's like when these problems happen, and they're already in a ton of consumers' hands. That's right. You know, well, we journalists are sometimes happy to uh, beta test for these companies. And this was a time where we did that. You know, we at The Verge also uh, beta tested one of these units and ours broke as well. You know, I will say it is incredibly unusual, though, for any product to make it into reviewers hands and then break so badly across the board. This was a wild one. To that point, I mean, Steve, you just mentioned your engineering chops and the background there. I realize a phone is very different than a self-driving vehicle. Uh, but are you surprised to see that so many of these phones that are touting this, you know, next generation foldable technology are essentially so flimsy right now when they're going out to media? Yeah, I think this reinforces an underlying point, not to get too flip about it, but uh, hardware is extraordinarily hard to bring to market. Um, unlike software problems, w whether we look at sort of others that have had uh, happened around launch times, uh, you can't just move fast and break things. Uh, the iteration cycles are really long. Uh, tooling is expensive, and so uh, it's a very different thing to, to bring something like this to market. The additional challenge here is you have OLED technology, uh, which is relatively new. Uh, you know, it's, it's been in large form factors for sites quite some time, but in this form factor uh, is a new thing, and you have the folding component. So you've stacked multiple risks on top of each other, 
uh, and that makes this extraordinarily hard. It also brings all these other disciplines into bear. Uh, we're talking about electrochemistry and just an even average uh, display is, is five to eight layers uh, of thin film technology. And so um, this is a really hard thing to bring to market. I think the point is, is, is right, that you'd rather break it in the harbor than out at sea. Uh, but, but, but for sure, there's, uh, there's some embarrassment here. But let's not forget, guys, you know, this happens to the best of us. Apple's uh, butterfly keyboard is still an issue. Uh, Tesla's Falcon doors, uh, you know, still not closing right. So I think when they get beyond these uh, launch glitches, I think this is going to be a pretty interesting phone with a different form factor that will be welcome, I think.